are ready today to actually install the hybrid battery bank. So, unfortunately, it's not going to fit in the engine bay. That's why I have already set up wire to go into the trunk, and this will be a truck mount. But we're going to start in the engine bay today. So let's get the camera closer and get the battery out and get it ready for installation in the trunk. Okay, so here's the battery in my car, positive and negative. And this blue wire sitting right on over here, this is my two gauge uh, positive wire that's running straight back to the trunk. And I had the zip tight and I installed this a few weeks ago. So we're going to pull out the battery, not worry about the negative because I've actually ran a secondary negative right here, which goes down to the frame. Uh, actually to the transmission which gives a negative what this used to do and there's also a secondary strap on the opposite side of the engine all the way over here so this negative is just going to sit off to the side and not do anything for right now so let's get that started that's why it wouldn't drop down there we go Here's our two positive leads. Okay, I got the battery out on the Kia Soul 2013. You actually have to take two bolts out from back behind the computer, and it sits on these little nubs that hold the bottom of the battery nice and secure. So you had to remove the computer frame out of the way, pull the battery out, and then put it back together. So now we got that out of the way, let's cut this cable tie I had here temporarily. This is our positive wire. So we're gonna run positive. Too positive, real simple. That is a good, nice, secure connection. Let me go get some uh, electrical tape. I am not left-handed. There we go. Let's get a wire tie and put it off to the side so it doesn't get in the way of anything. Get the old negative out of the way. Don't want to rub it on anything. It doesn't need to. Yeah, that'll work. Uh, cut off the excess. There we go. Now we have our positive cable running straight back to the trunk. Now before we actually go into the trunk, let's go into the dash and install the display real quick. And then we'll actually go and install the unit itself. So here's the display we made in a previous video. And we're going to mount it right here. Because it's about the only place I can really put it. I did want to put it up top here. But it's considering my case is so big, it's going to block too much of my view. I don't want to do that. Down here, it's not going to bother anything. The only thing I have to really worry about is sunlight hitting it and overheating it. We'll see in the time being. But again, I ran the RJ45 cable a few weeks ago. So all we have to do is plug it in. And to keep it there, we're going to use this 3M Auto Advanced Super Strength Molding Tape. We're going to run like two runs of this down on the bottom of it. This way it sticks to the dash and it won't go anywhere. And there's two. Now let's get in the position we want it. Now it gets stronger as you let it sit for a little while, but I'm not going to sit here on the video for an hour or two waiting for it to really get sticky. So let's plug it on in. And now it's ready for when we actually install the unit in the back. So let's go do that now. So now we're in the trunk. First thing, let's get rid of this little cover. Get that out of the way. And the unit's actually going to sit right here, so let's make a little bit of space, get this out of the way. And let me go find my cables that I already ran in here, which are currently underneath here, probably wrapped around the spare tire. So let's get this out of the way temporarily. Yep, wrapped around here. Oh, sorry. This one's my positive cable. This one 
is my negative cable, which is a four foot long length, goes right to a bolt right in the frame right here. So that gives me my negative frame right there. So let's get all these out of the way. There we go. Let's put this back in. Perfect. Now, the unit itself fits perfectly right in that spot. I love it. So, what we're going to end up doing cutting little tracks, little holes right here. This way, the wires can pass through, and I can still put that cover on top. So, let's do that. There we go, we got our channels. There we go, there's positive. Now the networking, which goes on the opposite side. Let me move these out of the way. Not true networking, but RJ45 rather. And I can look up front, you can't see right now, but everything just came to life on the screen. So let's route these wires, the excess, out of the way. Of course the interior lights have not come on the vehicle yet, only because I have still have the uh, breaker open, so there's no main power going to the car yet. There we go. She is installed. So let's get everything buttoned up, and then we're going to actually give it a shot and see what it does. Okay, so we're going to shoot this part of video handheld and without any interruptions, breaks, editing whatsoever. This way, no one can call BS on me. So here's the final part. No battery, our positive wire, connected to our positive wire going in the back. Ow! So let's keep on going back. Here's our display right now. Currently powered up. The car is still currently dead. If you look, no lights, no nothing. Because we have not closed the breaker yet. And speaking of which, there's the battery. So there's the battery. It's not even inside the car at all. Here's the unit itself, fully installed. So let's close the breaker and give the car some power. There we go. Lights just came on. At least the trunk light did. Let's go on up front. Let's give it a shot. Yep, now we have top lights. Everything. So now we are running off these supercapacitors. Let's take a look at this. Started beautifully. Come on, focus up. There we go. Let's let it run for a few seconds. You can see the supercapacitors are already up to 14.1. And we are charging the uh, lithium iron phosphate battery. There is 1.83 amps going back in to the battery itself. And supercapacitors are at 14.3. Let's shut it off. See, it's not on right now. Back on. Supercapacitors went down to 13.9. That's it. And here it comes right back up again. Let's do it again. Thirteen nine, thirteen eight. Woohoo! Nothing. Yeah, the amount of supercapacitors and the farad capacity of my battery bank back there is overkill for this little two-cylinder or two-liter four-cylinder car. I love it, and it's just charging. It's happy as ever.
So there you go. It works, and it works phenomenally. You can't beat it. We're not even dipping the voltage practically at all, and that's with the two gauge cable running from the trunk all the way up to the engine. It's not stuttering, it's not having a problem at all, it's not sluggish and cranking on over, and it's only 64 degrees today, so it's not like it's really cold and that would be a reason for being sluggish, or again, really hot, and that's why it would start over a little bit easier. So, it works great. So, at this point, we're gonna do a one month video, probably a three month video, a six month video, and give an update, see how the system does. After six months, I'm going to go ahead and remove the monitoring, the third part that actually has the nice little graphic display and the relay in the back, because that pulls an extra 50 milliamps all the time, even if I shut that screen off. It, the screen actually only uses about eight milliamps. So for more longevity, we're gonna remove that parasitic load, but I wanted it on right now this this way we're good for initial testing and I can see what it's actually doing so if you have any questions or comments go ahead and leave them down below thumbs up this video and please share it wherever you can because this is the future and one more thing laser saber thanks for the inspiration here's version 2.0 if you want to go that far